how do we get some other gardens growing, if you will. And so I think this is a nice group, and I'm really looking forward to being a part of hearing your experiences as well as what um, what your next steps will be if you could agree with us on who you want to go with. But mostly I'm here to say thank you for being a part of the workforce arm and congratulations. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. So the next person that I would like to introduce you to is Professor Jim Corbin. He is going to talk to you a little bit about um, what he does and what he's hoping to do and a little bit about the Master Gardener Association that we're trying to build. Um, he has a lot of background, a lot of experience in this, so um, I'm looking forward to hearing him talk. Jim? Thank you. I was thinking I was supposed to do a pole dance. He thought he had two hours. I told him I got these notes for a two hour lecture. I don't think I can take it because I I just thank you for being here. Um, I just came from class with some of my students race over here ahead of me. Um, I just got out of sustainable agriculture uh, class, which is a uh, four credit class. Uh, some people used to call it uh, organic farming or organic agricultural methods class. And this morning I had a class in plant science. Um, we are meeting the same student, and some of the people here at this class uh, was, was on other things. Um, what I would like to just mention to you is that we started this Master Gardener program. This idea came up about six years ago long before it ever really developed. And we tried to develop it in, in, at that time, and it, it takes a lot to get together a new curriculum, a new program, you know, where it's going to be, and how it's going to be run, and so on. It was it was a little bit easier than kind of just invent, reinvent the wheel, because there's master gardener programs all over the country, as you know. And as I may have said when I spoke with you so many months ago in uh, one of the first classes that we had, um, so the, the Master Gardener program is around the country and around the state and at the University of Rhode Island has a very active program, Marshall County has a very active program, is really a way to get people uh, to give back to their community. It's, it's a way to, we want to train people who want to be really good gardeners and do the right thing. And we particularly have an interest in sustainable agriculture in our program so that uh, a lot of what you are hearing in these courses were organic agriculture because we are convinced that uh, this is the way future, uh, the future agricultural system is going uh, because we're, everything right now is based on petroleum and petroleum is not an abundant cheap resource anymore so we've got to find other ways of doing things that will produce what we need <laughs> so we have a, uh, this agricultural sustainable agricultural program which I hope some of you will consider moving into because it's, uh, it's uh, pretty mentioned these are credit courses, but they're a little more rigorous than that regarding courses, and they take you in another level to understanding of uh, sustainability and agriculture and food production and so on. And uh, these courses run every semester. We now have a permaculture class that's running this semester, uh, and we will be probably running every fall uh, that uh, offers another aspect of design in agriculture that uh, people are very excited about. Uh, I took my first permaculture course about 27 years ago from Bill Mollison, and I've been excited about it ever since. Um, and I hope I have incorporated a lot of that information and everything I do. The whole concept, though, of master gardeners is to make good gardeners out of people. And many of you came here already as good gardeners and hopefully you learned some new things and you shared your ideas with other people. So it's a, it's a mutually beneficial uh, event that, that goes on in the training. But beyond that, we have an agenda, uh, those of us who've developed this program, and that is we need help. Mm -hmm. We need people to do agriculture in a better way. Uh, this used to be a, an agricultural county, which was county in county many years ago. It, today, is an agricultural economy, but it's kind of a secondary, um, not very visible 
tight economy. It's growing. Uh, we work with farmers in this area in my courses. Do you know how many organic farms or soon to be organic farms or in transition organic farms we have in southern Bristol County and southern Plymouth County and a little bit of eastern Rhode Island? In other words, the area that DCC uh, works in. Anybody want to guess how many? No, you've already heard. It, sorry. Uh, how many farms we have in this in this area? These are farms. People who are farming the land to make money. They're not just big gardeners. I mean, they're actually trying to make a living part time or full time. Ten. And I'm sure I don't know of all of them <laughs> because there's no. We know of at least 175. Wow. It's a growing. Exploding economy. There's a demand, there's a market for food, for good food. People are concerned about the quality of their food. Of course, the best way to get good quality food is grow your own, but everybody can't grow their own all the time, or they're limited. The idea then at the Master Gardener is these farmers and gardeners need help. We, I get so many calls a week. Could you come and look at my garden? Could you come and look at our community center? Could you come and help with the school? Could you help with our housing project? Um, People Inc. would like us to look at about 35 different places. I just can't do it. And we need help. And that's why we're recruiting for you. You people now came here with some skills. You hopefully strengthen those skills and will continue to strengthen those skills. And you're now at a level where you can be helpful. You can help the community. You can give back to your skills in addition to benefiting yourself. And that's what I'm trying to recruit. So I hope in the evening, while we're talking. I have a sign-up sheet here. Um, we need to start forming this association. We need to start pulling together a group of people. What does this mean? What is this usually at? I'm, I'm going fast here, so we're I'll, I'll just go on back in a couple minutes. Okay. Just like but I just want to give a quick overview. Absolutely. I don't want to get buried in the details. Here. But a, a Master Garden Association usually is set up of people who've completed the Master Garden program. They've done their volunteer work. They're, they're capable of doing what they need to do. And the association is a, a group of people who come together for their own mutual benefit, to stay educated, because Master Gardens usually have ongoing meetings. They have speakers come in. They have training. They have, every year they'll have a couple of workshops where somebody will come in and give them updates on new information about new varieties, new fruit trees, uh, new techniques, new methods improving our skills in testing disease management, for example, or irrigation, or pruning, or whatever it happens to be. Uh, so you constantly are strengthening your own abilities. And in addition, you're then taking that message out to places where you work. The volunteer commitment is an ongoing commitment to keep your master gardener status. It doesn't mean you take the course, do your volunteer work, and then you're good for life. It's not like a PhD. And then you can go downhill from then on. You've got to keep it active. It's more like a nursing license or a state license where you have to keep it active and you have to keep up to speed. You have to keep up with what's going on. And so you need to have these meetings, you need to have the purpose of the training. And they're not big uh, burdens, they're usually four times a year. And you put on workshops, you put on conferences, you invite people from the public to come in, you give demonstrations. Maybe you have a plant sale in the springtime. Uh, you have things that encourage people. People need help gardening. So many people I come in on contact with will say, I tried gardening and the woodchuck did everything. I tried gardening and everything died. I tried gardening and it just didn't, you know, produce and it was too much work and I didn't give up. And that's I hate to hear that because gardening is so easy and so much fun and so productive. There's no reason for people to have that kind of trouble. Usually what they're lacking is a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of information. And you have that knowledge, you have those ideas. And you could probably get them through that tough time when they're just trying to get something new going and plant a few things, to get a few plants going. Whether it's flowers or vegetables, I don't care. It's, it's whatever they want is what matters. And, and get, get going. You need help doing that. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is get this group pulled together. We'll use Facebook, we'll use email, we'll use the website, we'll use meetings, whatever it takes, whatever works. Um, master Gardener programs uh, use the tools that they have and pull people together and keep this group 
uh, serving the community in many different ways, whether it's in Bedford, or Westport, or Fall River, or Swansea, or wherever you're from, there's a need in those areas. And we are getting the calls uh, for help. So by pulling this group together, then what I'd like to see is a group that's essentially a proxy extension service. Have you, has anybody here ever called the Bristol County Extension Office to get help with gardening? There isn't any. It's gone. <laughs> it was closed years ago. State closed state extension service offices. So if you're a gardener or a farmer, who do you call? There is no place to call to get help. What's this bug? What variety should I plant? How do I do this? What do I do about that? There's no place to call. Master gardeners around the country fill that need. Master gardeners man the hot ones. They, they have plant clinics where people can bring their stuff in and get it diagnosed and get a recommendation of what to do. You go to them, they come to you. Whatever works is, is what the Master Garden Association can do. And it's really up to the volunteers how they want to drive the group and what they have to do. And that's what I want to talk about. Is, and that's why I want to get people aware of and then we can talk this evening more and hopefully people will start saying, well, I'm interested in at least knowing more. At this point, I don't expect people to commit a lot to it. Uh, but we can start pulling this together. And the Master Gardeners from last year and the Master Gardeners from next year will also join into this and start, start pulling this together and putting in more and more volunteers as a group. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Um, so, with that, I know that everyone's getting hungry. What I'm thinking is that we're going to go have some dinner. I'm going to pull that aside and we have an array of food. Thank you for everyone who brought, brought food this evening. That was great. Um, and I actually recently just did this thing called a freezer meal night. And I'll tell you, you got to try it. I went, you know, they give you a list of, of items that you have to purchase. You go and then, and it was healthy. It was all good. Um, so I went and you go and you, I made 20 meals in three hours, 20 freezer meals. And I thought, First time I did it on these filling, like, it can't be tasting that good. They lasted me a month. And being a working mother with two kids and a husband who works, lifesaver. So I brought four of them. So it takes them <laughs> hungry corn pots. And if you like them, look up a freezing meal workshop to do. So um, while you're doing that, once everyone's settled down, I'll start with a little presentation that I have. I have a fun show that I would like you guys to see that I think you'll really enjoy. And then we'll get moving with the program. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start the presentation. Um, the little show that I'm going um, to show you, it's a TED Talk. Who here has heard of a TED Talk? Oh, I found out about these things recently, and I'm in love with them. They're very short, like between 8 and 18-minute videos about anything and everything in the world. And all the speakers are just really engaging. So I was listening to one on oil, and I was so fascinated by it and it's typically not my thing, you know. I've listened to some astronomy, this, that, everything, everything you could think of. And um, they're really cool. So I listened to this one recently and it really motivated me and made me feel uh, good about what we're doing because it really shows how small things, you know, how individual people can create change in communities at a large scale, on a large scale. So. I was, you know, you know when you watch something or you read something and you feel so good afterwards? This is one of those videos, so I wanted to share it with you. It's on edible landscapes, which is a really cool one. So um, what I'd like to do now is to um, have um, some of our students come up and talk to you about their experiences. We have two students um, on the agenda today that are going to talk to you about what they did for their volunteer hours. Just so you know, once they go through the program, um, what they do is they document the, the hours that they do, and I have some really, you know, there's different ways, it's very, it's kind of think outside of the box, creative ways to do it, very open-ended to, you know, whatever you choose to do. So I have a book here that Susan has put together for us. So this is her hours that she documented. She took pictures and wrote little notes, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to read through it. So this is a different, unique idea. Thank you very much. And we also have, um, this was the template I gave you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for following us. Um, and, yeah, no, it's fine. You take pictures of where you are because sometimes, you know, there isn't really anyone there 
all the time to sign off on you. So this is just showing what you did, demonstrating the work that you've done, and um, then writing a little journal about the work that you did and where you did. Um, and we have lots of these from students that um, have completed their 40 hours. So I'd like to call up Susan LaVenture right now to talk about her experience in the school garden in Fall River. Susan? I, my, I'm Susan LaVenture. My project was the Watson Garden Elementary School here in Fall River. I started at the Green School for a couple of weeks, which was a smaller garden, and then went to Watson. My only regret was that the children weren't there for the summer. The, the reason why it was such a big task was because it was it, there wasn't anybody else there. And that, that is a regret. At least at the Green School, they had a summer program and the kids could be involved in the garden too. And I think that's the most important piece of that. I guess they had, I don't know when they started planting, I would assume it was March or April, so they, they did get to play with the garden, at least a little at Watson. And it's too bad, Watson has the perfect space for the garden. They've got a lot of raised beds. There was a lot going on. But the best part of it was something that um, a couple of people have said tonight was that it starts a conversation. And it did there too. People actually stopped. People that, I think they take their regular walks and I obviously they were seeing me there at least three or four times a week, either weeding or watering. And it did start a conversation with people. They stopped, they wanted to know what was being planted. They wanted to know what exactly was going on. I think sometimes they were wondering what, what I was doing there. but. Um, it did start a conversation, but the conversation, I think the most important conversation is with the kids. Um, I think that, that a school garden, I just don't think there's anything more important than those school gardens to introduce those children. Um, I do it with my own nieces. You know, I made sure that they both had tomato plants that they could water, that they could, you know, uh, prune, that they could harvest and they're three years old and they've been excited about it all summer long, believe it or not, and it was just a tomato plant. One of them now has chickens. She's decided to have chickens, so she's raising chickens. And um, anyway, it was a very good summer. It was a very good experience. It did start conversations. I had a wonderful time. And I, I certainly thought that there should be some changes. I thought crops should have been a little different than they were, maybe planted a little differently. But it was a, it's a great program. I, I don't, I just don't think there's anything better than to introduce these kids to these, to these gardens. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your, your volunteer work. Um, and before April speaks, just to piggyback on that, the principal of Watson was going to come tonight, but she got stuck in a meeting. Um, so she's very grateful for all the work. She just wanted me to pass that along that you've done. Um, and the, and the thing with the students over the summer, it's been an ongoing problem with school gardens. What do you do over the summer? And there needs to be some, you know, buy-in from the school, which there is during the school year, but it doesn't, hasn't yet kind of translated to the summer when there's no summer programs going on, which I'm going to have someone talk to you about in a minute. Um, you know, and with, I don't know, those of you that know, the school's under a lot of pressure. They've been designated a level four. And with that, the last thing on, on, that they really want to invest the time in is going out in the garden. So, you know, that's another difficulty that they're having. So, you know, we're trying to work on that. Um, so, actually, from here, I'd like April to speak about her volunteer opportunities. Sorry, that's your kid. My name is April. Um, I was, I'm a sustainable ag major, so I was fortunate enough to get to work at a couple of farms and get to learn, you know, proper volunteer hours there, learning, you know, how to rotate your animals, how to rotate your crops, things to that effect. And, um, I was actually, through uh, ripping out my own yard and putting up a garden, able to meet a new person who was walking by and said, hey, you're ripping out all your grass, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting in vegetables because grass isn't giving me anything. <laughs> and uh, was able to get them to help go and help them with their place in Westport, establish a garden and you know, teach her a couple different ways to do some proper rotations on her garden. And um, my biggest prize about it was I actually got her to agree to take the leaf and uh, the grass clipping bag off of her lawnmower and let it self fertilize itself. And when uh, fall comes, she says she's not going to rake her leaves. She's going to mow right over them and self uh, fertilize her ground, which is great. You know, we helped her establish a compost bin because I said, if you're going to throw the stuff off, you might as well at least compost it instead, you know. But she got her compost going. And um, like I said, from now on, she's going to just mow and let the stuff leave where it lies. And uh, we had some really great opportunities. And, Got to learn a lot of really great stuff and 
can't wait to continue with, I mean, we have more plans to go on Friday, tomorrow. We have an 8 a.m. volunteer at a different farm, so it opens it up and get a lot of people talking and try and get people to understand the importance of healthy foods and taking care of yourself, being self-sufficient. So, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. So from here, I'd actually like to ask Charlotte Doyle to speak a little bit. She is a, um, she's from the Fallbrook Public Schools, retired school teacher, and she currently works um, in an after-school program, the 21st Century Learning Program after school. First, I want to thank Jen. Um, about three years ago, I wanted to get a garden going at uh, Green School. Green School, at the Green School, I'm the site coordinator for the 21st Century After School Program and the Summer Program. So Jen, through Jen's effort and through some money that Jen was able to get for me uh, through the Rotary Club, we, and some help from the Rotarians, they came in and actually built uh, the raised garden and helped us get started with the planting of the garden. That was three years ago. Um, I had a lot of support from the custodian at the Green School because the problem we had with the garden was, yes, the planting does stop in the spring. And so the children have choose activities to work on in the after school program. One of the activities was gardening and had no trouble with getting kids to sign up for the garden and had a fabulous teacher who taught the activity. So it's a great hands-on experience. She was able to incorporate math, reading, English language arts, science, science, all in the garden program. So in the spring, the planting went well, the watering went well, this great custodian at the green watered for us on Fridays, so everything's fine until the spring program ends, which is the first week in June. And then we stop the summer program after July 4th. So you've got that lapse of time there. Who's going to water the garden? The first year, Angel, who was the custodian, did it for me. But she's got her other duties. I mean, she's not hired to water the garden. She did this really as, um, as a favor for me, for the children, who were so excited about their God. Then again, Jen came through for me this year, and thank you, Susan, and thank you, because these two ladies came and filled in the gap. So they came, they watered the garden in the afternoon. And what you have to know is watering this small plot garden where we grow vegetables, tomatoes, zucchini, squash, uh, peppers, herbs, um, is no easy task because there's no outside faucet. So the water, we were able to get a hose three years ago, but the hose has to be brought to the garden, of course. We generally would take it out a window, but it still has to be dragged. And it's no easy thing to do. But thanks to these two ladies, because I was doing it myself until they came along and Jen got them and they volunteered to come and help me with that. So the rest of the summer, the garden went well because four days a week, Monday through Thursday, we have our summer program. And um, hopefully Mother Nature helped out on Saturday and Sunday with the water. The produce we um, were able to grow from the garden and supported our cooking program because we have a cooking activity. So the kids really get to see the fruits of their labor. They actually get to see all these vegetables and herbs being used. And then part of the gardening program, they also get to make salad and invite family. And at the end, we have what we call a showcase of activities. So it's been a great success. But yes, we continually need those volunteers to help us. Um, and you mentioned about the different ways that, you know, would have been better for the Susan to plant. And certainly we would welcome any expertise in helping us 
you know, to teach us what would be the best way of planting and so forth. And I know the teacher would appreciate it. So thank you for that. Thank you, Sharon. At this point, I, really, I know we have a student who needs to leave. I'd really like to do the presentation of the certificates. So I invite um, Terry Romanovich and Jim Corbin to present the certificates to our students. So the first one is Avril Andre. Congratulations, Avril. Established in 1996 and we became incorporated in the year 2000. I am a retired RN and when I did retire I um, decided that I would address the lack of uh, tree planting and tree care in Fall River and I'm a long-term member or at least I was a long-term member of the Garden Club so I went to the Garden Club and asked if they would support um, a program, and they readily agreed. They gave me some startup funds. And uh, at that point, I went to the mayor, and who was Mayor Lambert at that time, and uh, Rick Kitchen, who was head of the park and the tree department. And I proposed that we uh, establish a public-private partnership with the garden club being the private part and would supply the funds and that the city would supply uh, the manpower. Um, <clears throat> there was no tree care or tree planting in 1996 for 20 years prior to that. And there was no budget uh, that was allocated for tree planting. Um, so the Fall River Street Tree Planting Program is still the only tree planting program in the city. Um, we have accomplished a lot. There's still a great deal more to do. Um, our main focus is planting trees and the program works in two ways. If a citizen along the city street wants one tree in front of their house, uh, they can buy a, a tree for $100 and we match it so they'll get a $200 tree. The city will um, dig the hole, we go for the tree, and we have a trained group of tree stewards who plant the tree. Um, they have to sign to maintain the tree, like to adopt it. The second way that um, trees are planted in the city and it's the way that I prefer is a neighborhood group planting where a group of citizens in one or two uh, city blocks agree to adopt trees and they pay $50 per tree. We pay $150. So they get a $200 tree and we get more uh, trees planted that way along city blocks. We have had some excellent success 
If you take a look at um, uh, Valentine Street in between Robeson and Highland Avenue, there's a great planting of eight or ten uh, trees and it absolutely uh, enhanced the block tremendously. The other um, <coughs> area close by there is um, Hobbit Street in Madison. Again, between um, Madison and Highland Avenue, ten trees, and uh, it was a group planting, and they, again, really a nice neighborhood tree planting. Some of our activities have included tree steward training classes. We've had three classes uh, taught by uh, arborists and educators. The first one was taught by Steve Dempsey, who's an instructor, and I think now he's the administrator at Bristol um, Aggie. We have probably um, 32 or 35 uh, tree stewards who have gone through the course. Not all of them have remained active, um, but when they do sign up, we stipulate that they have to contribute 20 hours of um, volunteer work uh, for the city in tree planting per year. So we have now uh, approximately uh, 12 to 15 active uh, tree stewards, and Louise uh, is here. She's a, a trained tree steward, a very active one, and also a member of the uh, tree planting program. Uh, many of the members have worked assiduously to promote um, uh, tree ordinances. Uh, we worked very hard to get a tree commission established within that ordinance, and that did take place. That was successful. We have advocated for a budget that has not always been so successful. Uh, we've advocated um, very strongly for city tree equipment. The city now has a stump grinder, a bucket truck, and a chipper. Um, <clears throat> we've done a lot of uh, outreach and uh, applied for Tree City USA. We are, uh, are a Tree City USA, which is a national award and that's nine years. And for the past four years, we have obtained an additional award called a Growth Award associated with Tree City USA. Um, as far as activities and opportunities for volunteer, we're always looking for people to help us plant. Um, on October 4th of um, this, well, a week from Saturday, we will be planting approximately 65 trees in uh, Sandy Beach and in um, the Maplewood neighborhoods. And, and we are looking for help for that. Um, <coughs> we do pruning of city trees from the ground pruning only. Um, we do uh, a lot with Arbor Day. Uh, we've had Arbor Day contests for children. We do a lot of outreach teaching about Asian longhorn beetle and the emerald ash borer. Um, we also need help with fundraising. <laughs> and I think basically that's about it. We have an excellent um, website, www.frstpp.org. And we have also have a Facebook page, Fall River Street Tree Planting Program, Facebook. And are there any questions, comments? I forgot one thing. We've planted over 1,500 trees wow. in the city. Wow. That's great. <laughs> that's great. That like you've done a great job and a thankless job for years. Yeah, quite and a few it years. really shows. It's it's showing, and I think everybody recognizes that in Fall River now. The work that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay, so we have one more person. I'd like to give an opportunity to talk about uh, talk about the opportunities that they have. This is in Taunton. Um, one day, I had a call on my phone that somebody it was they thought it was about the master gardener, so it came to me. And I got in touch with um, Karen Cruz from the Taunton Housing Authority. 
They have a site, a development, and in this development, they have a community garden, and they were looking for support. Um, you know, they had written this grant, and the people that they were to partner with, um, it was, they were looking for new partners. So I was really excited about it. I'm like, how can we help? Because this would be great, great partnership to really build our Master Gardener program and help them with the development of their um, community gardens. So I'm happy to say that as of last week, this partnership is now pretty concrete. And we have an instructor here from BCC and Dan King, who works for the, uh, Lydia Silver is this instructor. Dan King um, runs the Dartmouth YMCA farm there and they're going to be working with the um, Taunton Housing Authority to help this community really develop their gardens. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to just say everything, but I was just saying everything. I didn't mean to. No, Karen, no, no, go no, ahead. No, say no, something. No. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Jennifer did not tell me I was in the program, and I'm not a, I'm I not tried. A I tried. I, I couldn't get a hold of so, I have notes. Um, Jennifer said it all. Um, we have two large community gardens. They're each a quarter acres uh, and a large greenhouse. Uh, they are part of a new development called Bristol Commons uh, with 88 housing units. Um, and the residents are very excited about this. We contacted BCC because it was very important for us to make sure that the gardens, the, the program set it out right that it sat it out right and it was going to succeed. And <coughs> when we met BCC and we listened to everything they could bring forward, it was clear that this was the right way to go. Uh, we'll be, um, we have Lydia helping us with working with the residents, deciding what they want grown and helping decide on you know, <coughs> how to you know, plant the gardens. Um, Deanne is overseeing everything. Deanne's overseeing the Master Gardener program. We're going to be holding Master Gardener courses right on site. It'll be open to the community. And um, another nice component is we brought in the UMass Extension. We'll be doing healthy eating workshops and working with residents, um, you know, cooking demonstrations. Um, so we have a lot going for us, and we are looking for volunteers. Uh, anyone who might be interested, whether you want to work with children in the gardens, you want to work with helping adults, if you want to help doing cooking demonstrations, or teaching people about healthy eating, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, just stop by and see me, and uh, we can talk about it. Thank you. Have I forgotten anything? Anyone have any, you know, I want to thank you all very much for coming. I really, you know, this was the first of what I hope to be many, many more. I hope to grow our, our group and our networking group. I'd love some feedback about how you thought the evening went, and I set it up. This is the first time I've done something like this, so let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what I could do better. Questions? I just wanted to let that, that white bag over there was filled with strawberry plants. Please take them. They're, I started out with four years ago, and they're growing everywhere. Thank so you very much for bringing this. And those. there's two chili peppers there. Anybody who likes chili peppers more than welcome to have them. And please feel free to take any food home over there that you would like. Otherwise, I'm just packing it all up and putting it in my car and it's going in the freezer, which is full of freezer <laughs> meals. So I don't know if I'm going to have room. So help yourself. And like I said, please provide any feedback and we'll be in touch. Don't forget to leave either your business card or you know contact information so we can put you on our growing list. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you.